Good morning everyone. Welcome to our morning devotion. Today is Tuesday and thank God, no? We survived because this month is a month of March, almost one year, no? And we survived this uh, pandemic and by the grace of God, we will continue to survive. Although our government are aware of another variant of coronavirus and it's more uh, transferable, but I know and I believe our God, Abba Father, can protect us from all this uh, harm and pandemic that is happening now all over the world. But we believe that if we have faith in God, nothing is impossible with God. And if we make Jesus our Lord and Savior, He can protect us in this life. So come and join me and let's start by prayer. Heavenly Father, we are grateful today in the mighty name of Jesus. We believe, O oh God, in you that you are the supreme being, the very powerful one who can protect us from any harm. We submit to you and we ask for forgiveness. We ask the blood of Jesus to cleanse us from all our unrighteousness, from all our sin. And right now we ask the Holy Spirit to open our hearts, enlighten us, and let the word of the Lord penetrate deep in our spirit that we may grow stronger and stronger inside. Thank you, O God Almighty. In the mighty name of Jesus, we give you praise and glory and honor. Thank you so much in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. If you have your Bible with you, join me in reading the book of Deuteronomy, uh, chapter 10, uh, verses 12 up to 19. I read verse 12, and then you can join me. And now, O Israel, what does the Lord your God ask of you? But to fear the Lord your God, to walk in all His ways, to love Him, to serve the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, and to observe the Lord's commands and decrees that I am giving you today for your own good to the lord your god belong the heavens even the highest heavens the earth and everything in it yet the lord set his affection on your forefathers and loved them and he chose you their descendants above all the nations as it is today <coughs> circumcise your hearts therefore and do not be stiff naked any longer. For the Lord your God is God of gods and Lord of lords, the great God, mighty and awesome, who shows no partiality and accepts no bribes. He defends the cause of the fatherless and the widow and loves the foreigner or the alien, giving him food and clothing. And you are to love those who are foreigners or aliens. For you yourselves were foreigners or aliens in Egypt. Fear the Lord your God and serve Him. Hold fast to Him and take your oaths in His name. So, most children are giving instruction by the parents that they don't talk to strangers. But our topic today is welcoming strangers. It's opposite. People always say, don't talk to strangers. But the Bible says, God himself, we need to welcome strangers. But how we can do it? How can we welcome a person that we don't know. So we need to foundation ourselves in order for us to do it. And the Bible 
give us instructions. How can we welcome strangers or an unknown person that comes into our path? In verse 12, the Bible says, And now, O Israel, what does the Lord your God ask of you? But to fear the Lord your God, to walk on all his ways, to love him, to serve the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. Repeatedly, God emphasized the necessity of love that comes from the heart. No? God did not want His people to substitute heartfelt love for Him with more outward religious counterfeit or religious forms. First, we can welcome strangers if we experience fatherly love. Jesus taught his disciples to address God as his father. So it's all about relationship. If we, ex we, if we are experienced love, then we can love others. But if we experience being unloved, then it's hard for us to love others. That's why the writer, Moses, emphasized the necessity of love that comes from the heart. You know, we can, we can love people because of their outward appearance. We use our senses. We use our eyes. We love them because they were our relatives. We love them because they were our friends. We love them because they were our siblings. We love them because they were our parents. But that love is more on outside love, more on our senses. But Moses emphasized that this love must come from the heart. And how can we establish our love from our heart when we experience the love of a father? Because our father, God, is a spirit and he communicates with us through our spirit because man is a spirit. We are created in his image and God is a spirit so we are spirit. So if God communicates with our spirit or we say our heart, then that love will grow in our heart. We experience the love of the Father deep inside in our heart. When I read the Bible, I've noticed that our God compare with the love of a mother to his children. So our God is a God with a motherly love. No? When he always said about a hen gathering his, her cheeks no? and covered them with her feathers to protect them because the hen loved her cheeks. The same with our Father God. He loves us so much. And our hearts respond to His love. So our spirit open up to His love. And the Holy Spirit of God put out His love in our hearts. So that's why our love became from our heart. No? That's why they said, it said, O Israel, what does the Lord your God ask of you? But fear the Lord your God. To walk on his ways, to love him, to serve the Lord your God with all your heart. And then the Bible says in verse 16, Circumcise your hearts, therefore. You know, circumcise your hearts means 
change your heart. Allow God to change your heart. No? Because God don't want us to be changed from outside. He wants us to be changed inside. Because when we change inside, the Bible says, from what is inside, it goes out. It says, from the abundance of our heart, mouth it speaks. No? So when we have a relationship with God intimately, His love will be put out into His heart. In our hearts, our hearts will be filled with love. So if that is God's love, then we can love others like the love of our Father. So from now on, we can love strangers. We can welcome strangers because we are strangers in the covenant of God before. We are alien with Him. But thank God, through His Son, Jesus Christ, He sacrificed at the cross because of His great love for you and for me. When we accepted Him as our Lord and Savior, then from being strangers, He welcomed us and He gave us a position to become a son, to become a daughter, to become a children of our God. So, if our hearts is full of love because the love of the Father is rest and inside of us, then in verse 19, a command is given. Verse 19 of Deuteronomy chapter 10, And you are to love those who are aliens. For you yourselves were aliens in Egypt. Hallelujah. So, it means to say, God loves strangers. God welcomes strangers. And He commanded the Israelites, And you are to love those who are aliens, for you yourselves were aliens in Egypt. No? They could begin to imitate God's love. Wow! We can imitate God's love because the love of the Father is inside of us. We can e imitate His love. We can welcome strangers. We can love strangers. Then we can imitate God's love and justice in their relationship with others. So if our hearts are not begin with our relationship with our Father, then it is hard for us to welcome strangers and to offer help to strangers. But praise be to God. We can do it. We can share anything for strangers. That's why the Sorok Foundation Loving and serving the unfor the forgotten neighbors. It's like this. They share love to the total strangers. They don't know the street people personally. But because of the love of the Father inside the hearts of members and workers of Sorrow Foundation, then they can imitate the love inside of them and share it to foreigners or strangers. I pray that your heart be overwhelmed and be filled with the love of our God, our Father. And let that love for God overflow inside of us. And let that overflows of our love be given 
to strangers, to foreigners, to people that are unknown to us. Let us pray. Father, we give you praise and we give you glory for loving us. Thank you for including us in your covenant because we are aliens, we are foreigners, we are strangers before. But because of your great love, you welcome us into your family. I give you praise and I give you glory for the love that I receive from you, for an awesome love. So Father, right now, I'm grateful and thankful to you. Thank you also for the love of the Father poured out to your people. Let that love overflow in them and let the overflow be given to strangers, to foreigners. Father, thank you so much that we can serve you through the strangers. Thank you, Father God. Father, I pray today for your people. I pray for your divine protection today. I pray for the covering of God Almighty, the covering of the blood of Jesus to each of them and extend that protection to their loved ones in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray for a blessing from heaven to be released and be given to them in the name of Jesus because when we put our trust to you, we will never be put into shame. Father, grateful and thankful. Thank you for your faithfulness to the Uni Group company, to the Uniship. Thank you for more than 30 years of your faithfulness upon this company. And we submit to you this company. And we ask once again for the hands of God to lead this company and bless this company and use this company to extend health and love to strangers. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise God. The Lord uh, bless you. Uh, the Lord God bless you. And, and I pray that we can see each other next week, the same time Tuesday. So God bless you all. And let's start a day with a joyful heart. So, God bless and thank you.